Last time on Adventure Archives, we journeyed to the northeast, experiencing Niagara Falls at night, exploring Walden Pond, and enjoying Maine lobster. We hiked around Acadia National Park and canoed Baxter State Park. Today, we continue our road trip journey, waking up at 4.30 in the morning to drive to the trailhead of Mount Katahdin. Now, the crew would be splitting up, exploring lakes and forests and rocky mountain peaks. Join us for the conclusion to our journey through New England. It was about 6 a.m. when Thomas and I set out on the trail. We're gonna take the Helon Taylor Trail. Let's do it. Before getting started, we had to sign in at the ranger station and we checked some information about the trail. Okay, the weather today mostly Ooh, cloudy to clear, high of 69. <laughs> oh boy. <laughs> Let's do it. <laughs> What a roaring brook. So when you did this, what time did you start? I think I started at 4.30, but I also camped right at the base of it on the AT side. And so all I needed to do was grab my pack and get on the trail. It's 6.13 a.m. right now. We have all day to do this, but we will probably need all day to do it. All right, let's go. Almost immediately, the upward climb began. Through the forest canopy, we could see the morning sun peeking through. It feels like we're making good progress so far. How does this compare to the way that you went up? So far, pretty comparable. I honestly expect it to be a little bit more uh, smoother grade, but no, I'm still climbing up boulders here. Yeah, uh, this is... Your video prepared me for what to expect, but the actual reality of doing it is a little... <laughs> Not that easy. No. Maybe it's just we know ourselves well enough now, but Brian and Andrew made the absolute right choice. <laughs> if they came up here, they would be miserable. <laughs> Not even 10 minutes in the hike and we're saying <laughs> Kind of nice and warm in this car. Could be warmer though. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so the office is not open yet. So we're just gonna wait here and get the keys once it's open for the canoes. In the meantime, I'm gonna take a nap. <laughs> <laughs> While we napped, waiting for the ranger station to open, the others kept trudging away. Thankfully, the steep boulder scramble had gradually turned into an easier hike for the time being. Well, the trail really did flatten out substantially. This is quite nice right now. Even though it flattened out, it's not like that hike has gone anywhere. We're just, it's just saving it for the end. Okay, I'm gonna ask you a question. This will be the only time I'm gonna ask it. Is that the peak? I wanna say not that one, but the one that's higher. Yep. I think that's it, or at least pretty close to it. Okay, even if it's not, I won't ask you again. <laughs> That'll be the first and only time. <laughs> the golden light from the morning sun now shone on everything around us. Though the day was just getting started, it felt like we had already hiked quite a bit. You feeling it yet? I'm really feeling it. <laughs> Meanwhile, Andrew and I got the keys from the ranger station. All right, so we got the keys right here. The north side of the lake is actually reserved for the people camping there, so we have to start on the south for the day use area. We'll probably explore around that southern shore a bit and then canoe north and back down. It was a short, pleasant drive to the parking area where we would be setting off for our canoe journey. But once we reached the parking area, you ready? <laughs> no. <laughs> <laughs> Got up way too early. <laughs> I know. At least we're not hiking a mountain though. Give me 30 minutes. I'm gonna let the car... <laughs> Just 30 minutes. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe it's my eyes playing tricks on me, but that looks vertical. This is just straight up. 
Throughout the hike, there were areas where the trail faded away into a vertical scramble up the piles of boulders. But the views at the top of each scramble were well worth the effort. like you were walking sideways for a second. <laughs> this trail has vertical uphill and then very small sections that will let you put your guard down and then it gives you another vertical uphill. <laughs> I think it's going to be worth it, Thomas. Surprisingly good progress. You see the blue ways? Straight up that way. I don't know. This looks right though. This looks, this looks nothing but right. This looks anything but right. <laughs> We took a quick snack break and tested to see if we could contact the others. Test one, two. Andrew, Brian, you come in. Over. No response? No. While the others snacked, Brian and I were just waking up from our pleasant nap. All right. The others have probably hiked a mile by now, at least. <laughs> and I've slept a mile. <laughs> <laughs> we should probably take our relaxing hike and canoe ride. Do we want to eat a quick snack or anything? I'm okay, you can. There's a picnic table over there. Now, we packed up our gear for the day and then headed out. It was a cool, calm morning. Perfect for a pleasant hike through the forest, even with a lack of sleep. How are you feeling right now? Tired. <laughs> I'm sure that'll eventually just wear off. Getting up at 4.30 a.m. is not the best thing in the world. <laughs> it's such a nice day right now. Yeah. It's like so cool and brisk and sunny. We hiked along calm forest streams. Above us, the sun illuminated colorful leaves. Along the forest floor were puffball mushrooms. Water rushed beneath us, and we could see the colors of autumn above. The only time I've been on a trail that was this vertical was uh, when Daryl and I hiked Mount Tengu. Similar view too. Oh, that's Katahdin Lake right there. That's where the guys have to hike to. They'll be canoeing all around that. It's like a sea of clouds out there. The mountain views were incredible, especially in the bright sunlight. But ahead of us, we had more steep, rocky scrambles to face. way in when you were saying you were a little nervous about the mountain. I really did not understand. I was like, what is it? Just a hike, man. It's just a hike. This is no hike. This is a climb. <laughs> yeah, this is actually vertical. This is straightforward. Hey. <laughs> I'll be right up. In the distance, I saw what I thought might have been the peak of Katahdin. I'm not gonna ask, but I will point. <laughs> look over there. Yeah, I can't see much behind those clouds. I mean, look how fast those clouds are moving over them. Wow. I kinda wanna hurry. I, I wanna experience the clouds while we're up there. Okay. Let's go. Man, you'd think views like this might get old. Not at all. Woo! We now hiked past the tree line and could see others hiking along the rocky slopes in the distance. Up here, the environment was dramatically different. All right, so we're not quite in the zone, but we're starting to see indications that we're coming into the tundra zone. And you can tell because some of this vegetation is very low, very clingy. And really, the tree line is almost non-existent. Most of them are coming up to here on my shoulder now. But the further high we go, the uh, more tundra and the fewer trees. The 
This is one of the best views I've ever seen in my life. Holy cow. With the view having opened up substantially, we surveyed the distance we had covered so far to see if we could spot our starting point. So if we're looking at this map, that pond down there, that is Sandy Stream Pond. There's a pond right there. Yeah, I don't see that other pond on here though. Pond there. It's probably just somewhere in this vicinity. What's kind of encouraging is you see these three ponds right there. We can see them out that way. Oh, okay. So we're probably like right around here. So. Pamola or Pamela, or whatever we want to call it. It's, it's granted steep, but still just up that way. I kind of hit a point now where I'm in a flow. It's kind of like you, you don't even think anymore. You've kind of retreated back into your brain and you just let your feet do the walking. Besides the change in environment, we also noticed a change in conditions. The good news is the elevation's never gonna get high enough that it's gonna start affecting our oxygen levels. Yeah. But it's definitely affecting our temperature levels. So probably, that's Pomola, right? Probably, and then beyond that's gotta be Baxter. Well, there's a cloud right there, Whis wisping by us. We might be able to finally taste the clouds, Robbie. I wonder what they taste like. Cotton candy. Up here, the scenery looked barren and alien, but undeniably beautiful. These are the clouds, can you taste it? Tastes like salty tears. <laughs> it was astonishing how challenging just this hike alone was. Never mind what it would be like for a through hiker. So somebody doing the AT, they've hiked all that way. Yep. And then at the very end, you gotta hike down to Good lord. <laughs> the views below us were absolutely stunning, but in front of us was the daunting sight of more steep rocky uphill. That looks intimidating. Yeah, just, just look down. Don't look that down. This is beautiful though. This is one of the best views I've ever seen. This gives Whitney a run for its money, man. Really? Yeah. Difficulty or abuse? Both. It's harder than Whitney. Whitney's yeah. like walking. This is climbing. Yeah. That plane this is not that much higher than us. I guess the helicopter. I've only gone bouldering a few times, and even then it's just indoors. But I find that I'm using some of the grips that I would. Granted, it's not true true climbing, but it's definitely climbing adjacent. Quiz for you. All right. Do we go this way, or do we go straight up? <laughs> Apparently up. <laughs> That's what the blue There is something to be said about trusting the blazes. You look at it and you're like, there's no way that's the best way. And then you get there and you're like, eh, it wasn't that bad. It was pretty good. <laughs> we continued our climb. Now we were at the same level as the clouds. Almost above the clouds and although we had now. made it a long way, we still had much, much more to hike. It's becoming even funnier in retrospect that I was not worried about this mountain. <laughs> I think in my head, I was thinking, oh, we don't even have to stay overnight at the top or anything. How hard could it be? Pretty hard. <laughs> kept climbing, getting closer and closer to Pomola Peak. I would say we're above the clouds now, right? Almost. So far we've climbed 3,200 feet. We are very, very close to Pomola Peak. And then right after that, Chimney Peak. This is not a trail, this is just rocks. Woo. Oh 
almost there. I'm feeling it. It's satisfying to look across there and not have to look way too far up just to see that mountain. Yeah, pretty tough climb, but really happy we don't have to deal with elevation. I think the max height we're gonna get is like 4,000. And that is perfectly manageable. We had now reached Pomola Peak. Woo wee! It was a relief to be up here, but the sight of the journey ahead was pretty intimidating. Whoa, that is daunting. Yep. I think even if Brian and Andrew wanted to come, their mom wouldn't let them. <laughs> Let's get out of this wind. Yeah. Ooh, this is no joke. This is no joke. This is a great hike, man. <laughs> Which side do you like better so far? This side, I think. On the other side, you spend a lot more time in the trees. I was going to say, I don't remember seeing such an amazing view. Even on the Adirondacks when we did Mount Wright, you couldn't see this far. This is hundreds of miles that you can see. I don't see Brian and Andrew. I'm not sure if my eyes are good enough. <laughs> oh, no, I see a canoe. Yeah. You see that one that's near the center, kind of at the top? Either that or just a rock, but maybe. I think I see what you're talking about. In the forest 3,000 feet below, Brian and I were still hiking along, making our way to Katahdin Pond. So far, it had been a peaceful walk in the park, especially in the fresh morning air and in the rich soil below, various mushrooms sprouted from the moss. And garter snakes slithered along the leaf litter. Colorful turkey tail fungi covered fallen logs, growing alongside a rich variety of plants. I've also been seeing some dogwood that grows along the ground. It's called bunchberry, but right now it's not in season, but usually they have little clumps of red berries that you can pick and eat. And then over here, we've got some balsam fir, which it's obviously a, a coniferous plant, but if you look at the bark, it's got these little bumps on it and you can poke them if you need some sort of like ointment that can help with like cuts and injuries, but it can also be a good fire starter. As I'm hiking, I'm seeing all these little bluet mushrooms just growing out of the ground. This is why I love mushrooms so much is, you know, you'll be hiking and then you come across this really, really lush patch of moss and suddenly you see all these beautiful little mushrooms sprouting out. It gives you the same feeling of when you're a kid finding an Easter egg hidden behind a bush or in a tree or something. But these mushrooms have a really distinct pale purple color. As they get older, sometimes they have a bit more of an orange brown color in the center. And actually these are edible mushrooms. Um, obviously with wild mushrooms, you wanna cook them up before you eat them, but yeah, beautiful and edible. We continued hiking through the boggy woods and Andrew found even more mushrooms. So down at the base of this tree is some sort of a coral fungus. It's got this really beautiful white color that just stands out against the brown of the forest floor. I'm not exactly sure what species it is, but it looks like it's got these smoother tips. One of the coral fungi species that I'm most familiar with is crown tip coral fungus, and the tops of those have these like five pointed crown shapes on them. Uh, and those are edible, but not every coral fungus is, so. So this plant here is called hobblebush, and I've been seeing this all over. Uh, a lot of it is still green, but sometimes you get these flashes of red. But this is in the genus Viburnum, a, a genus of like shrubs that a lot of people often grow in their yards. And Viburnum actually means arrowwood because some of the bushes have straight branches that you can use for arrows, but it's really nice to see these colors popping in the forest. <laughs> Sprouting from the moss were some edible mushrooms, including this Cantharellus minor. Okay, this is really exciting. This is actually a bolete called a porcini mushroom. I've heard these mushrooms sometimes called penny bun mushrooms because the top of it kind of has the coloration and the texture of a little baked bun that you might find. But also, these are choice edibles. That is pretty exciting to see. Along with the king bolete mushroom was a more common edible fungus. So these, of course, are pear-shaped puffballs. There are some really nice fresh ones growing on some of these logs. And then there's also some of these less fresh ones, which are ready to send their spores off. And if you hit them, there we go. But of course the fresh ones are edible. Um, the way to check to make sure they're still fresh is to cut them in half and make sure they're white. But even from the outside, these ones out over here look perfect. 
We now reached a junction in the trail. Okay, so this would take us to the north of the lake. But we're trying to get to the south side. We're gonna go down to the day use area on the south and pick up the canoe there. Which works out better because it's less hiking for us. So. Yeah. <laughs> it's like 1.3 miles now. So. Alright, let's go. Up ahead, I found more gourmet mushrooms. So there's a couple of clusters of mushrooms here. These are black trumpets, a choice edible mushroom. I mean, you can see it's got this darker color and this sort of trumpet shape, and it's got these ridges rather than gills, which is something you also see on chanterelle mushrooms, so. They smell good, they smell a lot like chanterelles too, so that's really cool. I wish I had a basket and a way to cook all these mushrooms I'm finding today. <laughs> these logs are pretty narrow and slippery, and there's a decent stretch of them. Ooh. Not treacherous, but one slip could easily get you a wet foot. <laughs> this is not just a walk in the park, though. <laughs> no. So down here are some gem-studded puffballs, uh, another edible puffball species that's pretty common. And if you brush your hands on the puffballs, you can see all these little gems coming off of them. And they really stand out against the forest floor. But again, if you cut them in half and it's all white inside, you can eat them. So down here, we've also got something called Indian cucumber root. And we saw this also at Acadia, but these are some really beautiful specimens. Some of them show like the really beautiful star whirling pattern of the leaves. And this one actually is fruiting, which I've never seen before, but you can see at the top there's these dark berries and this beautiful red coloration of the leaves. But this plant is edible. If you pull the root up, um, you can eat it and it's nice and crunchy. And I see some cool mushrooms here. Nearby, I saw a russula mushroom and some fairy stool mushrooms. This is like tortoise and the hare, except the tortoises are the ones who are stopping. <laughs> But it's, this forest just keeps showing us all these amazing mushrooms. But down there we saw a type of fungus called golden spindles. I'm also seeing some more coral fungus over there and some other mushrooms just growing out of the moss. But it is a treasure trove of mushrooms right now. It is really cool. There was also a ghost bolete nearby, which had developed an almost bluish color on it. So down here is a mushroom that Brian spotted and it's called destroying angel. It's in the Amanita species and it's all white. And you can tell it's Amanita because it's got this distinct skirt. And then if you dig in the ground a little bit, you'll notice that there's a bigger bulb kind of towards the bottom of the stem. So here's a question. Do you feel any semblance of regret that we are not hiking that mountain? No, not at all. <laughs> and honestly, if I had been hiking that mountain, I would feel regret, not for me, well, for me, but also for them because I'm not in any shape right now to hike a mountain. I feel like I have no energy, no motivation. I'm so tired. Yeah. I think the contrast between what we're doing today and what they are shows two appealing aspects of hiking. Like, mm -hmm. it is always really appealing to be hiking a, a cool hike where you get to the top of a mountain, but the, the way I like to experience nature the most is like this, where you can take your time, look at all the different mushrooms that are growing, and of course the canoeing is going to be amazing. Mm -hmm. It's like that sort of still and calm nature experience. Yeah. There are definitely different ways to enjoy nature at Baxter State Park. The trail to Katahdin definitely provided an extraordinary experience. The path ahead was just a jagged, rocky scramble down and up the mountain ridges. Woo! This is a little sketchy. <laughs> You know, it's really funny, dude. We've climbed a lot of mountains, and I still have never really considered myself a mountain climber, you know? I think it's safe to call myself a mountain climber after doing this one. <laughs> this, is, this is what I've always pictured, like, just on a knife edge, you know? You know, it's serious when, when you try and go 10 feet <laughs> forward, you have to go 30 feet down. <laughs> This is just, just crazy, man. Just stay there. I'm going to try and get down. Okay. I, I, I don't think you. the camera can capture this, but I want to see how. Okay. See if it shows you how far down you have to go. I'm six foot three, by the way. Oh, I'm Robbie. I want to go hike Mount Katata. <laughs> Robbie, you know it's very tough. It's not going to be that tough. <laughs> Two weeks later, I'm. On my butt sliding down a mountain trying not to die. 
I can't even blame you because I was the one who wanted to go. <laughs> I didn't even know it was going to be this bad on this side. The blazes are telling you where to go, and it still seems impossible. <laughs> At the bottom was a calm stretch of flat ground and an amazing view. I see people up there. Oh wow. That's probably Baxter Peak right that there. That is Baxter Peak, yeah. Yeah. That seems so far away. <laughs> wow. Call it alone. I don't know, this might be the most beautiful hike I've ever been on. The view from atop the mountain ridge was utterly surreal. From here, we now had to climb to the next crest of the mountain. And it was quite literally a climb up slabs of vertical rock. Behind us, we could see another group of hikers descending the nearly vertical section of the trail we had just finished. Crazy. Yo. Well, that was somewhat worth risking our lives for. <laughs> This gives you an appreciation for all the people who actually build trails. Never has 50 yards seemed so hard. <laughs> that is crazy. We just went right down that vertical. This is the most beautiful trail I've ever been on in my life. This is amazing. This is the best hike I've ever done. It's funny, because I think when I told you I did this hike, you're know, like, maybe I could get into mountain hiking. Yeah, that's funny. Oh man, awesome, truly awesome. This is the knife's edge, I guess. Don't fall. <laughs> nope. At the top of this crest, we took a moment to take in the view around us. But then, it was time to scramble back down even more treacherous terrain. Probably the most terrified I've ever been from hiking right here. Just put your whole body against it. There yep. you go. There you go. I'm thinking, and I'm just going to slide. Oh. All right, there we go. Certain death. Certain death. Let me see Gosh. if there's a better way of getting down from that. No, not really. Pretty much there. There, your your level. Woo. <laughs> Ahead of us was more seemingly endless scrambling and climbing. Having to navigate the rocky landscape meant we were traveling at a snail's pace. Rob, I think it's fair to say we're above the clouds now. <laughs> Let's go. Yeah, this is worse than Angel's Landing, Mount Whitney, any of the mountains I did in Japan. This is like one of the scariest, most difficult hikes I've been on. Yeah, you want to go up there? Uh, you know, drop down a little bit. Yeah, right there, that's great. Up ahead, we ran into someone that we thought was finishing up an Appalachian Trail through hike. No, I uh, work for the trail crew here. Oh, awesome. Well, yeah, but a bunch of guys are just finishing up back there. It's pretty awesome to oh, see. Oh, that's good for them. Yeah, it's spectacular. Keep the center of gravity low. Though the landscape had already been tough, it was about to get even more precarious on this section of the trail called the Knife's Edge. Here, we had to carefully creep along a narrow backbone of jagged stone. With every step, 
We had to be actively mindful of where we placed our feet and hands. Up ahead, there was a split in the trail on either side of the ridge. Okay, we were told the right side is more fun, left side is more easy, but the blue blazes say go on the right side. We're gonna opt for the fun route. So, Robbie, why do you think this is a fun route? Well, oh, okay. if you like the feeling of near death, this is pretty fun. Hey, there's buildings down there. Really? That's nice. Actually, not too bad. Despite the drop off. I was going to say. Once you find out where the blue blaze is, it's like, okay, that's not unreasonable. I mean, it is unreasonable, but no more than anything else we've done up to this point. Making the hike even more scary was the powerful wind rushing over top of the mountains. After scrambling down more rocks, we took a moment to catch our breath and think back to other precarious hikes we had done. You remember that time when we were in Hawaii and we were like, it was like twice the size? We were like, oh, I got to scoot on my butt. <laughs> now it's like, okay, now it's really life or death. <laughs> Absolutely nice edge right here. You did that a lot better than I did. It's actually really nice to have somebody in front of you. You see them do it and you see them. Up ahead, the terrain again changed slightly. This section is definitely a bit rockier than the other ones, but this is actually fairly traversable compared to what we have been doing. While the others continued on their treacherous hike, Brian and I were finishing our leisurely jaunt through the woods. I can already see just endless blue up ahead. <laughs> oh, there's the canoe. Oh, whoa. Oh, here's the shelter. Man, this looks nice. Look at this, dude. Wow. Holy cow. like this whole lake to ourselves. Look, that's where they are right now, that mountain. I think, right? <laughs> sure. <laughs> After inspecting the lake, we hiked to a nearby picnic area for lunch. Do you think that we could be two of ten people total that might be in this general area? If that, if, if you that, know. yeah. I feel like the only people who would come out here besides us are people who are staying at the, uh, the shelters anyway. When we first started this road trip, there was a slight part of me that was a little bit worried that I would feel like I missed out not doing the mountain climb. But actually, the more we've done this hike, the more I'm like, this is actually... Like, we haven't even canoed yet, and this hike has already been really cool. Mm -hmm. I found all those mushrooms. It's just been, like, perfect weather and peacefulness, you know? Out of all the forests we've hiked, there's something about this one that really accentuates the isolated feeling. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, the funny thing is, they probably think we're like already on the lake by now. <laughs> mm -hmm. I don't know how far they are. I don't know. After our snack break, we hiked further down the trail where we saw another garter snake resting peacefully. We found our way to the canoes, excited to get out on the water. While Brian grabbed life jackets, I unlocked the canoes. We carried the canoes to the edge of the sandy shore and got in. After settling in, we pushed off, embarking on our canoe journey. Oh man, this is great. The lake itself was a thing of absolute peace, but there was also a nearby diversion that the ranger had told us about. He mentioned the wilderness camp back behind us, and then there's an island right here that would be worth checking out. Maybe we could head that direction, check out the wilderness camp first. As we coasted along the water surface, we talked with each other about our hike and paddling so far. If I had to do any convincing of myself that this was the right choice to make, I no longer have to now. <laughs> wow, I still can't imagine that. We are in such a secluded place that at any given moment on this lake, there's probably just going to be a maximum of like two or three canoes. Yeah. That's another thing is if you just listen, like all you hear is the breeze yeah. and some birds. Also. Right there is where Robbie and Thomas are going to be hiking right now. And we're just <laughs> bumbling around on the water. <laughs> I 
mean, it's slow going, but we've made some major progress. That was the peak where we had lunch. After a while, I think we've been out here for probably over an hour now. The fear of heights, definitely diminishing as I just get used to it, so. The fear of heights is like gone, but the disdain for this ridge is rising every second. You're <laughs> like, I'm ready to get off of this. Yeah, seriously. Oh, I, I think it's right there. I think we're pretty close. Yeah, you take the lead. My turn? All right. Yep. Let's go. We've been hiking along this ridge for so long, it started to feel like all we had ever done in life. As we hiked along, we tried to figure out where we were and how far along we had come. Can you pull out that map? I'm curious if this was Chimney Peak. No, the chimney was over there, where we were first on Pomola, then the one immediately that we had to go down and back up. That was the chimney. Okay. This one here is South Peak, and then this one, that one up there, is Baxter Peak. It's been a TED Talk brought to you on the top of Mount Katata. We now neared Baxter Peak, the top of Mount Katata. It was hard to imagine just how far we had hiked in the verdant valleys below. As we continued on, we came across some AT through hikers who had just concluded their final hike to the top. You guys through hikers? Yeah. yeah. Congratulations. Thank you. Thank you. I can't believe it. <laughs> I, I can't believe it either. <laughs> we were in Smokies six months ago and we saw you guys just starting. Yeah. Oh. So much has happened in the last six months. I can't believe you guys have been hiking the whole time. <laughs> we can't really. Uh, so much fun. Anyway. <laughs> Congratulations. Thank, Thank you, you so much. And now, it was our turn to summit. Get it. It's so different coming up this way and then looking at Knife's Edge and being like, I did that. Yeah, from a distance, it doesn't really look like you can walk on it, but when you get right next to it, it's kind of traversable. Yeah, well, most of it is. Yeah. It's like that 1% percent that <laughs> boot and scoot. Ooh, yeah, let's go have lunch. Yeah, let's do that. Springer Mountain, Georgia. Only 2,189.1 miles <laughs> to go. There's someone over here that's done that. 2,189 miles. Okay, how high is this? 5,267? There you go. That's respectable. Yeah, only a third That's of a Mount, respectable climb. <laughs> almost a third of Mount Whitney. Finally, we had made it. The way back down looked much more inviting, but we still had a long hike ahead of us. Before that, it was time to have some lunch. Oh. Here, you want me to feed you some pretzels? Uh, uh. <laughs> Real glad we're going down a flat path. Yeah, after the tabletop. Yeah, I'm sure it's gonna suck. It kind of gets at least there's some reprieve. Life sure is good. From up here, mountains that looked unpassable from the ground now seemed like mere molehills, and the vast blue lakes looked like tiny pockmarks on the Earth's green surface. As we canoed peacefully across one of those lakes, we decided to find our way to the shore once again. So we see something over there, and we were told there was like an old wilderness camp or something like that. I don't know if it's still in use, but it sounded like it was abandoned. What is that though? Is that like a... I can't tell what that is. Maybe it's a boat ramp that's like folded up. Yeah, let's go check it out. It looks like there's a sandy beach there too. There was something enticing about the mystery of distant objects on the shore, and the idea of exploring an abandoned camp. It's definitely a boat launching ramp, right? There's chairs too, and tires. This is, must still be used to some degree. It looks like it. Yeah. From the shore were stairs leading higher up, with canoes and equipment on the side. Is it like fresh firewood? Yeah, these look nice. Purgatory Lodge is a weird name for a lodge though. Yeah, it is. We decided to inspect one of the empty cabins. There's like a bottle of Dr. Bronner's soap, and it looks like there's fresh linens or something. Like I'm half worried something, somebody's just gonna pop up in front of the window. <laughs> Hello? <laughs> Hello? Everyone got purgatory lodged. <laughs> it doesn't even look that old. Yeah, it's so weird. There's like so much stuff in these buildings that look fresh and new. 
but then you look at the outside and it definitely looks like it hasn't been used for years. I was gonna say, this is like the summer camp that Freddy Krueger comes to or whatever. <laughs> we hiked further in and found more abandoned cabins. Some of these cabins feel way older and more abandoned than the ones out there. Like the buildings look a little more worn down, but also the path is kind of overgrown and stuff. So I am wondering if like there's a ranger or something who comes out here regularly. Cause like, look, you can also see like they've cut some of this raspberry canes and ferns down. Hmm. So they're definitely like mowing and maintaining this. So I'm wondering if they're trying to, I mean, it seems like it'd be a waste to just not do anything with this stuff. Yeah. So actually part of the trail connects here. So I'm wondering based on what Andrew says, maybe people occasionally come out here to like make sure there's no squatters out here or something. Huh, there's apples. Yeah. Look, there's a bunch growing up in that tree right there too. Hmm. That's really good actually. Yeah. <laughs> it's a little tart, but it's, it's not like, it definitely tastes like a store-bought apple. <laughs> growing on the ground were also strawberry plants and orange hawkweed flowers. Further inland was another cabin with the bulletin board hanging on the wall. Whoa, these are really old pictures. Although, there's something on there from 2017. Oh, you can actually take a water boat, apparently. Plane, water plane. Yeah. Yeah, this place kind of gives me the creeps. Yeah. Wow, this is really weird. But I think at this point we can determine that it was abandoned. Yeah. It, like, it feels like some old abandoned, like, commune or something. Mm -hmm. I guess my best bet would be some sort of summer camp or some sort of, like, summer attraction that they tried to get people to come and stay here for, like, a week or so. But ultimately it probably wasn't sustainable considering, like, the manpower or resources it took to, like, get stuff out here. Like, because clearly there's some, some of the buildings use gas and stuff. There's also some ghost gardens growing here. Places where they had planted things like hostas and stuff, and now it's just kind of growing wild. There were also planted daylilies growing nearby. Uh, a, bunch of, a kitchen? Here. A kitchen? Yeah. And a cellar that we definitely will not go down. <laughs> Inside the building were kitchen supplies that looked relatively new. The decor on this woodshed is really cool. Like, they have this huge moose antler. They got an auger. I don't know what this is. They got some horseshoes. Oh look, there's an old chessboard right there too. Some of what we saw looked old and worn down, but we also saw solar panels and satellite dishes. Further inland was a signpost pointing back towards the trail we had hiked in on. Also growing in this eerie place is an eerie mushroom. I'm gonna not breathe. So this is a poison pigskin puffball. I mean, you don't really need to worry too much about the spores, but you definitely don't want to breathe too much of it. But it's one of the few poisonous lookalikes of puffballs, which is why it's so important if you're foraging them to eat that you cut it open. Because on the inside, oof, you can see it's got all this gross gray spores. Yep, I don't want to stand too close to that anymore. <laughs> yeah, it's got this like thick yellow skin on the outside. To me, it looks like you took a tennis ball and ripped it open and there was just like brown foam in it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> now we headed back to the shore. I wonder if COVID is why it stopped. It's just weird. It just feels like they just up and left, just disappeared, you know? Definitely feels like one of those stories where it's just like everyone just disappeared and things just remained as they were. There's even like tires here that were used for tire swings at some point. After exploring the camp, we got back in our canoe and pushed back out onto the smooth, cool waters. Yeah, that was super interesting. I wonder if it's worth checking out that island, but let's paddle around a little bit more first. It's crazy that we're the only people out here. <laughs> like I'm looking all over the lake and I don't see even a single sign of another person out here. Just a gigantic entire lake to ourselves. Meanwhile, Thomas and I were preparing to make the climb down the top of Katahdin. Okay, you ready to get off this mountain and never come back? I want to say never, <laughs> but give me another at least two years. <laughs> the next portion of the trail was wide open, and the powerful wind rushed right over it. Last time I was here, I was telling the highest winds ever recorded were on this mountain. I thought I was right the whole time until I got to Mount Washington, and their big claim for fame was highest winds ever recorded on Mount Washington. I was like, okay. We hiked on, 
looking back at some of the through hikers we had met at the top. So that group right there is finishing the AT. Six and a half months of hiking. I have lived all sorts of different life in those six and a half months. I can't imagine what it feels like to finish that hike. I'll never say never, but I'm never going to do the Appalachian Trail. <laughs> The thought of hiking for five or six months seemed even more unbelievable after our exhausting hike along Knife's Edge. Thankfully, the trail seemed flatter, more gradual, and much easier to hike, at least for now. But despite having reached the top, we still had a lot of hiking left to do. I definitely have a tendency to when I get to the top of something, I think that's the end of the hike, and I forget there's a very long portion after that, which is getting down. Up ahead, we came across a landmark on the trail with a familiar name. So here we are at Thoreau Springs. This is uh, where Henry David Thoreau also went. I mean, is this it right here or yeah, is it? Yeah, it's right there. Got the plaque it oh. Yes. Thoreau ascended Katahdin in 1846 and wrote The Maine Woods, one of the earliest authentic descriptions of the great forest regions of northern Maine. And now we continued on. We had felt accomplished after climbing to the top of Baxter Peak. On any given day, the hike we had done so far would have more than warranted settling down for the day and relaxing for the rest of the evening. But we were still thousands of feet high in the sky, and we had a ways to go before we made it back down. Walking on flat ground for the last half hour, 45 minutes has given me the illusion that it's gonna be pretty easy. Walk up to the edge right here and remember, oh, oh, that's right, we're, we're still on top of the mountain. You know what a great thing about living in modern times is? We get to do this for fun. If they were doing this in the past, it was only because they had to. So many people came before us to make this possible and actually enjoyable. It was a long way back down to the tree line. As we hiked along this tundra-esque landscape, Thomas was getting in his zone and picking up his pace. We are rapidly approaching the point where Thomas starts leaving everybody else in the dust. I gotta catch up. <laughs> Incredibly difficult trail, but maybe the best views I've ever seen. Whoa! Before the major downhill began, we took a break. Tom, I'd love to join you. Take a nice reprieve before we kill ourselves going down this mountain. Oh man, this doesn't look fun. We looked out to find the pond we had canoed on the previous day. I'm trying to figure out which one of those is kidney. Now I, I think it was that one. You think it, I can't tell if No, no, it was that one. It was definitely that one. I could see the buildings. It's definitely not these two, the two closest to us. No. After resting for a bit, we started on the climb down. The flat trail gave way to more rough, rocky scrambles, but the amazing view kept us going. There were several large boulders to clamber down. Tell you, sound effects help. But there were also patches of easy, flat ground. That feels good. A little walking for a ways and then around that corner and then into the forest. We looked behind us, and we had already descended quite a bit from the top. So do people talk about this place as if it's a very difficult and awe-inspiring mountain? Because I always thought it was just kind of, you know, the end of the Appalachian Trail, and then that's what its claim to fame was. But just difficulty and beauty-wise, this is off the scales. I've never heard anybody talk about this one specifically as far as that goes. I think it's just so inaccessible. I don't know too many people who live within driving distance of Maine where they're going to do this. It's nice, now that we're coming off that crazy ridge up there. Starting to see some trees, they're only about knee high right now, but... That's a very good sign. We just climbed, started up top, 
We've hiked eight hours and 46 minutes, 7.71 miles, 4,200 feet of elevation gain. I am fried, baked, boiled, broiled, cooked, sauteed, pan seared. <laughs> oh. It gave us hope to see more and more shrubs and greenery around us, but the trail still seemed to be relentlessly rocky. Go in the wrong direction, Thomas. This is not good. What? I just mean like we're switchbacking. I want constant forward movement. The difficulty of the hike made us start fantasizing about the journey's end. I was walking on this flat ground here and I suddenly had a premonition of what it's gonna be like when we get finished. Can you imagine the joy that we're gonna experience in a few hours? I'm gonna literally take the food out of Brian and Andrew's hands. <laughs> Just swipe it from their hands like, oh. <laughs> Woo! As we went on, we kept an eye out for the metal handholds to help navigate down the rocks. There's one of them. Like that, maybe? Yeah, that wasn't terrible. Looks as good as any method. Yeah. Thank you, Paul. The easier part of the trail was long past. Without the assistance of the metal handholds, we would basically have to rock climb up some of the boulders along the trail. While the others continued their climb down the mountain, Andrew and I explored more of the lake. I think even if we wanted to try and like get to one side of the lake, we wouldn't have time. Yeah. Unless we just literally did only that. Look at this view though. That is yeah. incredible. Surrounded by mountains and green hills, it felt like this lake was our own little slice of paradise, nestled away in the North Main wilderness. You know, the other thing is this weather is perfect right now. Yeah, perfect temperature, perfect sun. The sky is perfectly clear. There's like not a single cloud. <laughs> yeah. What a far cry from the first half of the road trip. <laughs> As we paddled along, we took in the sights of the green trees, Mount Katahdin in the distance, and the clear blue skies. How you doing back there? <laughs> We're going against the waves right now, so it's slow going, but I'm fine. Yeah. We started paddling around the island in the lake, trying to get a closer look at it. The wind rushed through our hair as we approached the island. From our canoe, we could see patches of yellow-green reeds poking out of the water amid large granite boulders. Though it was a peaceful day, the wind and the waves added a small challenge to steering the canoe. It's kind of amazing how much the wind affects the waviness of the water. And your ability to steer. Yeah. It's just, you constantly feel yourself drifting towards one or another. As we circumnavigated the island, we saw pops of red leaves in the distant hills. Now that we had paddled around it, we decided to make our way back to the shore. It really was amazing how massive and vast this lake was. 
man, the size of this lake is just absolutely intimidating. Because it's like, on the one hand, I want to canoe more, but on the other hand, it's just like, where can I go that won't take another hour of canoeing? <laughs> and then once you get out like to the really middle of the lake, you feel like so insignificant. It's just kind of crazy, the, the scale. I think once we duck, I might have to take a dip in this water because it's like nice and warm and sunny now. Mm -hmm. Seems like the perfect day to do that. So we see our docking area there. It's still like early in the day, but we've got some stuff to hike and then we've got a lot to drive to get back to our camp as well. So what are you thinking? Should we keep canoeing or dock now? I mean, I think we saw a lot of great views. We got a lot of good canoeing in. I think all that's left to cap this off is to, for you to take a dip in this lake. Let's do it. Look at this incredible view. Literally perfect. <laughs> we were like three inches from where we came out from the canoe, I think. <laughs> where we launched the canoe. Yeah, like I can see the skid mark. <laughs> That's how easy it is to canoe in calm water. <laughs> Now that we were back on solid land, we explored the woods around us, and I found more fungi growing, like this witch's butter. Okay, so this is actually a fungus that Robbie and I encountered on our hike at Pictured Rocks, and we were thoroughly disgusted <laughs> by it. And this one is even more disgusting. <laughs> yeah, this is the northern tooth polypore. Uh, called that because actually this one gives you a good view of all the toothy pores here. Like they're, they're not just holes, but they're little stalactite looking. We now made our way to the lake, where Andrew decided to wade in the water a bit. The soft sand beneath the water surface felt great on the feet, and the cool water was the perfect complement to a warm, sunny day. It's crazy, this water is actually really shallow, pretty far out. In the distance, we saw some loons diving for food. After enjoying the lake one last time, we started our hike back out. In the meantime, Thomas and I were trying to figure out how to get down this mountain. It, there's blazes there, but I don't... I guess that's it. I guess that's it. You got this? Is there something I can't see? Because that doesn't look possible, but... Oh yeah, there's, there's rocks here. Okay. Thomas, we made it! The tree line, baby! Almost. Navigating down these boulders had been tough. So we rewarded ourselves with a snack break and checked our progress so far. No, come on, that has to not be updated yet. We're still pretty far, but it goes by faster. Oh my God, we are so far, dude. That took so long. How long did you estimate this would take? 12 hours. Probably pretty accurate. We're at 9.23 right now. Now, we continued on through the trees. Oh, this is nice. Even if this is gonna be short-lived, this is very nice. <sighs> Cheers to a not super hard hike. <laughs> In all seriousness though, that hike was nothing to sneeze at. Oh, that would be a rigorous hike for a, a normal day of adventure archives. Andrew and I now drove about an hour back to the campsite we would be staying at tonight, the Katahdin Stream Campground. Once we arrived, we checked to see which shelter we were staying at. Oh, one, two, three. So we can park here. So it's this way? Despite being under the tree line, we still had many more boulders to scramble down and a long way left to hike. Ready? Nope. <laughs> at this point, the trail seemed to go on endlessly, especially because we were exhausted from the hike so far. I don't think I can understate how interminable this section of the trail is. We have been doing what you're looking at on screen for like two hours. And it just keeps going. That looks pretty flat. Yeah, I don't know how long it's gonna last, but. I'm sure it's deceiving, but I'm gonna enjoy walking on this for the next 30 seconds. <laughs> Begins again. 
While the others made their way down, I had a plan in mind to make the last leg of their hike a little bit more enjoyable. All right, so I'm gonna go to the car and grab a few things that I need, some cold drinks and some snacks, and deliver them to Robbie and Thomas. It's funny because I have no idea where they are on the trail. They could be like still two hours away. It's hard to say, honestly. Either way, I'm gonna search for them, but we will see how it goes. Yeah, I don't know if you played Skyrim, but this is exactly like when you're carrying one pound too heavy and it makes you move so <laughs> slow just to punish you. I don't think I've ever moved this slow in my life. I can't imagine it gets more rocky than this again. And I definitely hear Katahdin stream just off to the right. We are, we are getting there, boy. As they continued, I made my way to the Appalachian Trail. All right, Brian, I'll see you. I've got the two seltzers that were left and they're wrapped in my down jacket and a rain jacket, which hopefully is enough to keep them cold. And I'm gonna be going on the grassy pond trail, the Appalachian Trail. Let's see if we can find Robbie and Thomas. I've also got uh, the walkie-talkie, which I believe they brought with them and we kind of forgot to grab ours from the car. I don't know if they actually have theirs or not, but at the very least, either them or Brian will have a walkie-talkie. Um, so I can make use of that if I need to. This is exciting though. I hope I actually find them and I hope I don't have to hike too much to find them, <laughs> to be honest, but we will see what happens. Come in, Ringus and Tingus. Do you read me, Ringus and Tingus? All right, well, I've barely made it on the trail and it's very easy hiking so far, so. We'll see what happens. In the meantime, we were starting to get ever closer to the trailhead. This is starting to look really familiar to me. Excellent. I think we're, gonna, we're gonna go downhill real fast and then level out. Cross that stream at some point, right? Very soon. The warm light of the evening cast the sky in a hazy light and shone through the gaps in the trees. Now we approach Katahdin Stream and we are greeted by the sight of a cascading waterfall. While the others continued down, I realized I had made a mistake in my plans. So in my extreme haste, I kind of realized I actually started going the wrong way on the Appalachian Trail because it was just right there next to our parking lot. And I was like, wait a minute, the sun is to my right and it's setting, which means I'm going southbound instead of northbound. <laughs> I think this goes to show how easy it is to make mistakes and get lost when you're not really thinking straight and when you aren't really preparing ahead of time. Glad I didn't hike too far in before I realized it. it should just be like a couple minutes before I get back to the trailhead. Man, I'm excited to see this, but I know we still got a little bit of ways. Is that oh. a toilet over there? Yeah. Do you need to use it? No. I can wait. It's a beautiful bridge. You can hear people up ahead, I guess. We're getting close to something. We were running on fumes at this point. Even the beautiful view around us couldn't perk us back up. Now that... This is the correct way. What a fool I am, but you know what? I'm still alive, so who cares? <laughs> Let's go. How much? 1.1. 1. 1. Okay, Baxter Peak, head in this way. Now we're actually going the right way. Cut a little bit of time off and look who it is. No, that's not them. There's some other hikers coming down though. I don't think I'll ever have been happier to see Brian and Andrew than when I see them once we get to the trailhead. <laughs> it's going to be interesting to see what adventures they got up to though. Did they flip the canoe? We have no idea. Could be. If they did, hopefully they held onto the keys and they moved <laughs> the car to where it's supposed to be. <laughs> did they finish the last two seltzer waters? Could be. The one thing that I'm paranoid about now is that as I was going the wrong way and coming back, I didn't stop by the shelter. Now I'm paranoid like we just miss each other and they're gonna go searching for me or something like that. But I think that's just paranoia talking. I was only gone like, I don't know, 20 minutes I'd say. It's funny because every shadow that I see, I kind of, oh, hey. <laughs> Look who it is. You guys are very close. Yeah. 
yeah. I've only been on the trail for 30 minutes and 20 of that was me going the wrong direction without realizing it. Bar none, no questions asked. Oh my the God. most difficult hike I've ever done. Wow. It's Kumatori. Awesome. Kumatori, piece of garbage. <laughs> Mount Lacant, garbage. Hawaii, garbage. Other Japan hike, garbage. Everything we've ever done is garbage. <laughs> I mean, not looks-wise, but difficulty-wise. Well, I have meager, but welcome gifts for you. <laughs> oh, oh, my goodness. Oh, oh, man. And they are cold. Oh. You. I could, I could kiss you. Heaven on earth. <laughs> Dink, thank you, Andrew. Uh, careful when you open them. Okay, they're fine. <laughs> I thought I knew what living was. You knew. I didn't know what living was until I was dying. <laughs> Andrew, I owe you such an apology <laughs> for every time I've ever said anything wrong about you. <laughs> Even coming down, we were like, those two better not have drank those seltzer waters. <laughs> let's oh, go. I, All right. They got to yeah, get off this go. You guys ready? Right. Yeah, let's go. <laughs> How was the, uh... It was nothing. <laughs> we took a nap until... <laughs> I didn't even canoe. Brian canoed the whole time. <laughs> oh, no. It's like the normal amount of physical exertion we'd have among all four of us, we split where it was just all me and Thomas yeah. and nothing for yeah. you guys. <laughs> Thank there's this part called, called uh, Knife's Edge. Oh, yeah. We kept saying, there's no way in hell your mom would let us take you on. <laughs> your mom would kill us if we took you guys up there. Yeah. And she'd kill us that we went up there. <laughs> Sign out and never come back. <laughs> Is this a one and done kind of hike? <laughs> uh, if ever... you ever want to do it again, I'll do it with you. <laughs> Did you guys have enough food? Yeah. Oh, okay. We just ate a bunch of garbage. <laughs> <laughs> Let's go back to camp and eat some more garbage. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, this is great, dude. Welcome back to the land of the living. <laughs> <laughs> You're like the guide who meets people after crossing the river <laughs> Styx. <laughs> I see someone else fell off Katad and I'll take you to the after point. <laughs> now, I led the others to our walk-in lean-to site, where someone had already made themselves comfortable. <laughs> Robbie is like a chalk outline right now. <laughs> oh my god, that was the hardest hike I've ever done, dude. <laughs> Arthur Morgan! Oh. Alright. As the others rested, Andrew and I started cooking dinner. First up were some sautéed vegetables, sliced onions, and zucchini. And it didn't take long for Andrew to start making a mess. Immediately. <laughs> the lonely zucchini. Immediately. <laughs> I thought your pants sucks. <laughs> <laughs> Jin Sakai, what is your cooking thoughts? Well, chef, we're sauteing some zucchini with onions with the uh, Parmesan garlic seasoning, and I think that'll be a wonderful accompaniment to these roasted garlic and Gruyere cheese sausages oh. that were handmade by a factory. <laughs> <laughs> As the sausage is cooked, I took some time to try and rejuvenate myself. How's that face washing go? That's not good. You look like a fly when it's like <laughs> trying to clean itself. And now it was time to eat. Ching, 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 ching. Sink it. Thank you so much, guys. Mm -hmm. <laughs> that is life right there. That is sustenance, flavor. Joy. Oh my god. So, should we drive into town? Get some cold drinks tonight? Oh. I think if we're gonna go into town, let's grab a hotel. I'm only half kidding. I would find this an acceptable outcome, but. I, I would drive. I, I will drive us. I am. I dead. was totally joking. But now that the possibility has been raised, <laughs> Hotel Archives is a popular 
<laughs> version of our show. <laughs> well, I'm gonna cook more either way. You guys have an excuse, me and Brian have an excuse. <laughs> Hey, ma'am. Can you hold this for a second? We hiked six miles and we canoed for two hours. Uh, that's fair. That's fair. I vote we get a hotel. I've decided. I will second his decision. Then. It's really up to one of you guys to be the deciding vote. I don't want that responsibility. I think someone who hiked Kid Haddon should have that say. <laughs> You're not going to get a dissenting opinion from me. <laughs> <laughs> Let's do it. <laughs> All right. Before making a final decision about the hotel, it was time for round two of dinner. Mmm. Mm. Wow, very, very seasoned this time. It's all the, the juices in the pan coming together. Yeah. I think the pound of butter that <laughs> cooked everything in <laughs> is really helping too. <laughs> yeah, Robbie, I feel like if it weren't for this filming of this and weren't for your constantly talking about it, I would forget how terrible this hike was. I cannot believe how hard that hike is. It's funny because it's on the Appalachian Trail, but it's like only five miles. <laughs> yeah, and the fact that that's the end of the Appalachian Trail. Yeah. Holy cow, man. I mean, if you didn't work hard enough already. <laughs> I suppose you'd be in peak physical condition at that point. Mm. Yeah, As we, we ate, Brian filled us in on the abandoned found. campground they had found. It's just so weird because it, it, it seemed like people had literally just upped and left the place and hadn't bothered like wow. moving stuff out. I wonder what's the story behind that. Yeah. Because we looked inside that purgatory lodge later and you could literally see like clean sheets on like beds. Weird. It was so weird. It was definitely like out of lost. Yeah, it was. The others, lost, yeah. yeah. Some barefoot people come out. Yeah, I was like really worried like some hobo squatter would like <laughs> start chasing us around or something. <laughs> Next on the menu, Andrew was going to cook up some puff balls. So far, so good. Nice and white on the inside. Yeah, they look perfect. Wow. First, we taste tested the puff balls on their own. Mmm, juicier than I imagined. And actually, the butter it wasn't too strong. It's very nice mushroom flavor. Wow, not bad. I've had these a few times. The one time I had them on Adventure Archives, though, they were boiled. Much better this way. You're right, though. It is a lot like juicier than I thought it would be. Next, we decided to make a mushroom omelet. I'm gonna try to do a pseudo Gordon Ramsay. <laughs> on the pan, off it, <laughs> on the stove, off it. <laughs> this is like Adventure Archives realized, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, this, is, this is the dream of Adventure Archives. This is the platonic ideal <laughs> of Adventure Archives. Ooh. How is it? Wonderful. I think Thomas and Brian already went to the hotel. <laughs> yeah, that's what I'm thinking. Where are they? <laughs> this tastes like spaghetti because of the Parmesan seasoning. Mm, okay. mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, good work. <laughs> good work, Chef Sakai. <clears throat> it came out of my mouth. <laughs> I'll just put that right back in. At Thomas's behest, the others cleaned up the campsite while I finished the eggs. Probably you've done a complete 180, whereas I've only gone further deeper into my despair. <laughs> Life is Trust. worth living. We now packed up the rest of our things and headed back to the car. After that mountain hike, I was dead set on the comfort of a hotel. You know, it is a road trip, so hotels are <laughs> are justified. I have no qualms whatsoever about what we're doing. No, I don't either. I yeah. feel disgusting right now. I, I do, but I got outvoted. <laughs> <laughs> We drove out under a moonlit night and then found ourselves back in Bangor, Maine at a White House themed hotel. But the comfort of the hotel also meant we had stayed in the car another two hours driving. Do we regret our decision? No. <laughs> <laughs> Worst decision ever. <laughs> this is what you get when Thomas pays for the hotel. <laughs> Is your urge to kill rising or falling right now? It's slowly falling. <laughs> See how I'm doing after a shower and a nice sleep. <laughs> Thomas may live till morning yet. <laughs> that Thomas's alarm goes off. <laughs> like, actually, you better double check, make sure the alarm's turned off. Yeah, yeah. From his uh, at 4:30 a.m. <laughs> oh my God. Everyone would mutually. I would just <laughs> stab him immediately. <laughs> He said his urge to kill you was falling, but you better make sure those alarms are turned off. <laughs> the next day, we got packed in preparation for our next destination. I've never been this sore after hiking in my life. And my arms, my arms have never been sore after hiking. <laughs> 
before heading out, we of course had to check out the complimentary hotel breakfast. There was cereal, potatoes, sausages, waffles, and more. Now, it was time to head out. What do we do? Don't tell Thomas we just spilled all this. And I'm just kidding. <laughs> Go into your couch. Dude. My bad, dog. No. <laughs> we now made our way west towards New Hampshire. It was an easy, smooth drive from here. But occasionally, our otherwise easy drive was stalled a bit. Stuck behind a very slow driver here. As we continued, we took in the scenery around us. We drove through more New England towns, then passed over the Androscoggin River. So as we're driving through New England, we're seeing a bunch of fences on either side made completely of stones and boulders. And the reason that is the case is because this whole area in New England is covered in these gigantic boulders. So if you're a farmer in the colonial or post-colonial age, what you have to do is you have to move all those boulders off your property, whether to build a house or a farm, and you gotta stack them somewhere. Well, might as well stack them in the form of a fence to mark your perimeter. Since this is one of the oldest parts of the US right here, you're seeing a bunch of these really old stones from when colonists first came here. We drove past endless verdant landscapes, old overgrown farmhouses, distant hills covered in trees, and beautiful lakes. We've been all across the Northeast so far, from Niagara Falls to Walden Pond, from Portland to Acadia, and from the lakes of Baxter State Park to the top of Katahdin. Now, we were continuing our journey. We crossed the border into New Hampshire. We were headed to Mount Washington this morning, one of the mountains in White Mountains National Forest. Today, we would be driving to the top of the mountain to save Robbie and Thomas from destroying their legs. And as per usual, Thomas would be the one taking the wheel. Well, Thomas, our lives are in your hands. Uh-oh. Thomas goes careening off the edge. <laughs> I'm sorry I was wrong! <laughs> and then right before we die, we go, You're not forgiven, Thomas! <laughs> Does it cost extra per passenger? Quick, hide. <laughs> I'm just a pair of pants. <laughs> Wow, dude, this is so nice. You can sit on these picnic tables, <laughs> have a beautiful view of that pond and the mountains, and eat your charcuterie. Man, I can see why people come here during the fall. Yeah. Nice. We're just a little bit too early, but this is yeah. really nice. Imagine you come back from a golf game, eat charcuterie, <laughs> your chauffeur drives you around. <laughs> we aren't much ones for luxury. Driving up a mountain after staying in a hotel is about as good as it gets with us. I, 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 also, I also got that bumper sticker last time too. All right, this is going on my car then. <laughs> <laughs> Driving down instruction says to drive down in lowest gear. Do not coast down in neutral. <laughs> Why would someone coast down in neutral? They'd just be like, I wonder what speed I'll be by the time I get to the bottom <laughs> if I just let it coast all the way down. <laughs> I mean, it's pretty steep. It's not like you're just kind of casually going up. Yeah. Feeling like I'm in an airplane taking off. Before I visited the Northeast in New England, I would never have thought of it as like a super mountains region. Like New Hampshire or Vermont, I just think of rolling hills with like trees and stuff, but never these huge giant Rocky Mountains. Yeah, these are the real Rocky Mountains. So what's interesting is when we were down at the bottom, most everything was still green. You had some trees changing colors, but as we go higher, we start to see more trees changing colors. North. As we drove higher, we were treated to dramatic views of distant mountains, and we saw more flashes of leaves that had turned yellow. We're very high up. <laughs> Off in the distance, we could see the bare, rocky slopes of the White Mountains. The higher we got, the more surreal the scenery seemed. Yeah, this is insane how high up we are. <laughs> the views that you're getting up here. 
Descending a mountain in a car definitely made the change in elevation all the more apparent. Wow, we're man. really high up, man. Also, being in a car does not make me feel any less scared of the heights. <laughs> you gotta have faith in your driver, I guess. I don't. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. I have faith in you, Thomas. I have all the faith in you. <laughs> now, Brian and I were getting our own New England mountain experience. All the views with none of the work. Cheers to that. <laughs> <laughs> it was hard to believe somebody managed to pave a road across these rocky slopes, especially after having hiked Katahdin. What type there. of hubris of mankind mm. would possess somebody to build a road up here? This is great, and I very much appreciate it, but why would you do this? <laughs> there's, a, there's a little literal cloud floating by right now. We now approach the top and could see one of the trains that carries passengers up and down the mountain. We parked the car, but ascending a mountain at such a quick pace left us feeling disoriented. Yeah, I've got some severe vertigo right now, man. Yeah, me too. I don't know which way I'm facing. I think part of it is those mountains almost look like you're looking at the ground because they're so massive that it looks like you're looking down. So I, I keep feeling like I'm doing the Michael Jackson lean, like dun 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 dun. <laughs> okay, hold on. Everybody look at Andrew's shirt right now. <laughs> <laughs> At the top of the mountain, we became enshrouded in massive clouds. It really felt like we were in some divine realm reserved for deities. But our exhausted legs were still very much stuck in the mortal world. Every step up is brutal right now. <laughs> it's like I did jazzercise for a week. <laughs> Are we high enough that altitude would be affecting us? If you're wondering, if you're just out of shape or if it's altitude, you're out of shape. <laughs> it's crazy that those are clouds. It looks like mist coming from a hot spring or something. It is wild. We are literally like, that. the top of that cloud looks. Wow, yeah, that is so cool, it man. It looks tangible. Look, these huge clouds that you see in the distance normally are just like directly ahead. Oh man, that is great. This is actually an even better view than what we had yesterday, so. Oh. You got all the views without the hike. <laughs> <laughs> I hiked with those stairs. <laughs> now, we proceeded towards the other attractions at the summit, first stopping to take a closer look at the trains. We had originally planned to take the train up and down the mountain, but with what we had planned later in the day, we ended up not having time for it. You want to train down? Right now, it looks appealing. But when I saw those rails earlier, I was like, <laughs> I don't know, man. Yeah, that looks pretty steep going down there. Like the train already is tilted very like steeply. And the only thing stopping it is right, those wait, brakes. Dude. No, you guys are perfect. Oh, okay. I love you on the shop. <laughs> <laughs> now, we headed towards the visitor center. So they've got a museum, they've got a restaurant, a gift shop, everything. I say if you're really into history and really into weather, then go check out the museum. I, I say love if you the weather. <laughs> <laughs> but before entering, we walk towards the very top of the summit. I guess what makes this kind of weird is that normally when we're this high up, we actually had to work to get there yeah, and yeah. there was nothing, there's nothing on top of the mountain. But this is up here and there's like buildings and restrooms and amenities. I, I'm not saying it isn't a really cool thing to be up here, but it really does go to show how much of an experience depends on the circumstances that led to it, you know? Cause like I, I could go take a picture by that giant cairn, but what would it mean? <laughs> Towards the back was a deck that overlooked the hiking trail and railroad that led to the top. So this is the one that our viewers have been requesting. This is the presidential traverse. So oh. each of these mountains is named after a president, I think. So this is Mount Washington. And then somewhere out there is like Mount Monroe and everything else. And you can start here and work your way from tip to tip to tip to tip to tip. And then that all the way be, back down. That would be awesome. That would be cool. From up here, we could see hikers making their way along the presidential traverse and the train was billowing smoke as it chugged along. Now we entered the visitor center, which seemed to emphasize the mountain's danger. It's a list of casualties here. Wow, that was really recent. August 14th, 2021. Heart attack, wow. Oh, 
funny, there's a legitimate U.S. post office up here. Somebody's got to deliver mail up here, apparently. In the basement was a museum, which talked more about the dangers of alpine weather. We also saw displays of animals like this bobcat, and Andrew recognized some plants. And look right here. Oh, common woods. Favorite. <laughs> We've got all the elements of a normal hike now. Without yeah. any of the work. <laughs> On a nearby map, Thomas pointed out that the Presidential Traverse was also part of the Appalachian Trail. Right here. So you start over at Pickman Notch, you work your way up along this side here, going all the way to Mount Washington, and you work your way back down, but this way, down the ridge there. Back outside, we again admired the surreal view in front of us. Like, it's so interesting to see these clouds right in front of us moving, but then behind them you can just see the clouds in the distance, like at eye level. <laughs> yeah, it's just so not cool. moving. Now, we headed back to the car. Oh, just coming down those stairs, my legs, dude. You guys made the right choice. <laughs> just, just come up, drive up the mountain, man. And some of that trail doesn't look nearly as bad as what it sounds like you guys did. Like, there's an actual trail. Yeah. What I've seen. I don't know, one day we'll find out. We'll do this mountain. Yeah, agreed. <laughs> <laughs> You're like, sure, yeah, we'll climb this one day. <laughs> no comment from Brian. <laughs> We made our cautious descent down the mountain and took in more of the scenery all the while. You can actually see the place we started out the window and it is very, very small compared to us. You see that? So far, we're pretty lucky. It's supposed to be raining right now, but no rain yet. Definitely some clouds to keep an eye on though. With how nice and sunny the weather was right now, it was hard to imagine we'd see more rain. But after we descended the mountains, filled up on yeah. gas and continued driving, we ran into a wall of thick clouds and bursts of rain. We kept driving, the mountains now covered in a thick cloud of an overcast sky. Eventually, we arrived at our destination, the parking lot of the Lonesome Lake Trailhead, where we would be hiking to a mountain hut. I think all three of us just fell asleep in the last 20 minutes. It was bizarre, I don't know what <laughs> Spell fell over you guys, but it hit you all at once. Yeah. Thomas yeah. played a lullaby for us. <laughs> he was like, I'm tired of listening to these people. <laughs> <laughs> now we gotta hike up this mountain. We geared up, making sure to have our raincoats on ahead of time. We've got two and a half hours to get up before dinner. Yeah, that's good time. Cause we got a mile and a half to hike, so. It would be a fairly short hike, but for Robbie and Thomas, the challenge of hiking uphill would be tenfold after yesterday. How are your legs feeling? Dude, my legs are just dead. They're not as bad as they're gonna to be tomorrow, I feel. We made our way to the true start of the trail, which would lead us through the woods to the mountain lake. 1.2 miles. Okay, All right. ready. All right, here Thomas, you're like a professional hiker, so how are you not sore? I'm sore. It's just, I feel like I forget the soreness as I start to move forward. Huh. It's funny, because I feel like my legs have atrophied from days of just sitting. <laughs> Actually, the second day of a hike is usually when I feel like I have the most energy, even though my legs usually feel sore that day because of what Thomas says. Like, once you get going, you just like ignore the soreness and you just keep motoring. The forest after rainfall is a beautiful sight to take in, especially when you pay attention to the smaller details. Uh, so already I've seen orange mycena and then oyster mushrooms, which of course are a choice edible. Mica caps, another edible. We continued through the woods. So far, we had a fairly easy trail with some slight uphill, and we had already hiked a decent chunk. All right, half a mile down. 30.8, man, this is great. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's to the lake. That might not be to the yeah, lodge it's, itself. It's pretty much more or less the same. Thomas, you have a tendency to say things as if you've done it before. <laughs> Except for the time I had been to Katahdin before. You didn't listen to me. <laughs> yeah, that's true. I guess you're damned if you do, damned if you don't. <laughs> 290 feet elevation gain so far. So a quarter of the way. This feels like punishment. What did I do to deserve this? <laughs> when Thomas uh, plans a road trip, he actually just disguises a mountain climb. There's three mountain climbs in a trench coat. <laughs> From here, the trail became much steeper, with big rocks to step over. 
and I was definitely feeling the exhaustion in my legs. It is a rare day when Brian goes twice the speed of Robbie. <laughs> yes. <laughs> How's it feel to be in last place? It feels bad. <laughs> I feel like I had heard multiple things about this hut. <laughs> First I thought it was just a short jaunt to a lake, but then I heard it was like a scramble like Katahdin for a mile. But the people that we just passed said it's, it's just like this for the whole time, so that shouldn't be too bad. That's Where are you hearing these conflicting messages from, Andrew? <laughs> <laughs> you say it with such confidence, I just believe it. <laughs> <laughs> There's these little pink gooey balls that kind of feel like tiny balloons filled with liquid. Uh, but this is a slime mold called wolf's milk, and I don't think the milk of wolves is pink, but I've never suckled the teat of a wolf. <laughs> so I couldn't, I wouldn't know. <laughs> also growing nearby were some hyphaloma mushrooms. Seven hundred thirty-six feet so far, elevation gain. Looks like it's gonna stop pretty soon and then it'll flatten out. Yeah. We can start to see the uh, the break in the trees up there, so I think it can't be that far from now. I have every bodily need right now. Both bathrooms, sleep, and eating, all at the same time. It's an interesting experience. So I know we've been on the road for better part of a week now, but we're still kind of backpacking in New Hampshire. And that's the first for us. You know, yeah, we've done a little bit of the Adirondacks and we did Maine the other day, but this is an entirely new state. Less than a week ago, I was just snoozing in Ohio. I have a secret shame that I could not list the states in the Northeast. I could do Maine and probably New York. And the rest of the states, like Vermont, New Hampshire, Delaware. Rhode Island. I forget that that one exists. <laughs> Eventually, the ground started flattening out and we found our way to Lonesome Lake. All at once, the weather changed and rain started coming down. That literally turned on like a switch. Yeah, that was crazy. You know, I'm already so wet from the sweat, it's almost not worth it. <laughs> well, at least we're close. Quite four miles. Oh, that's not as close as I'd hoped. <laughs> yeah. You know, the good thing about this is even though we're probably gonna end up soaked, we have a nice big hut to go to. <laughs> Cause we'll just have space to like spread out and dry off and stuff. Wow, this is awesome lake. Even in the dreary weather, the sight of the lake was stunning. In a way, the haze and clouds added to the scenery, giving it a mysterious feeling. Whoa, this is beautiful. Look at this, man. After hiking around the lake, we climbed the final steps up to the mountain hut. I'm looking forward to this. <laughs> oh man, this is nice. Smell that, Robbie? I do. That's There's food good. cooking. <laughs> Woo! This is great. Wow. This is cool. This is so great. <laughs> I want to live in a hut now. <laughs> it's so great to just be able to like know that you'll be dry and warm yeah. and not have to worry about getting into a horrible little Nemo tent. <laughs> <laughs> this hut belongs to the Appalachian Mountain Club, one of the oldest outdoor groups in the U.S. It was originally founded in 1876 to protect the White Mountains, and now has over hundreds of thousands of members across the Northeast. We now headed to our sleeping quarters, which are quite rustic and cozy. Right. Awesome. Thank you. Is this all right, guys? Yeah. Maybe we should give Robbie and Thomas the bottom so I don't have to climb any more ladders. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not going to lie. I think this is going to be the best night's sleep I get, because I get an entire bed to myself. <laughs> we took in the beautiful scenery around us, then headed into the main hut, for some hot coffee. Was awesome. <laughs> While we enjoyed our beverages, we watched as the diligent staff prepared tonight's dinner. 
After that, we headed outside to meet one of the staff members, who would be giving a talk on some of the local plants. We went down to the dock by the lake, where we saw some ducks resting peacefully. Our guide told us about the carnivorous sundews that sometime grow in this boggy environment. He did a project on them in third grade. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, actually, um, actually, my it was so funny because back then I wanted to get a Venus flytrap and a sundew and actually like grow them talk. for that thing. And you literally had to use like a scientific like ordering thing to get them shipped oh, wow. from like South Dakota. Oh. Nowadays you can go into like any Home Depot and buy carnivorous plants. Yeah. Really? Yeah, pitcher plants for sure. But yeah, I toured a bog in Ohio actually and they showed some sundews and they were like really small plants. Like you think they're gonna be big, but they're actually really tiny. Further down the trail, we took a look at some of the sphagnum moss growing in the soil. I did a science fair on sphagnum moss too. <laughs> Apparently, Basically, I did stuff on bog um, stuff. <laughs> Moss like this can help to somewhat filter water, and it was used in the past as diapers and menstrual pads. Our guide demonstrated that the soil beneath the bog water consisted of several inches of dead moss. She said that because bogs are so good at preserving things, they have actually found bodies of um, ancient humans in some of, bo some of these bogs, bogs like this. And, you know, the bodies are almost perfectly preserved, with the exception of their bones their bones just kind of dissolve because of the acidity. So my question is, are they just kind of like silly putty? You pull them out and you're like, you know, the boneless person. So she talked about how bogs are like layers of undecomposed moss because it's so acidic that they like don't decompose because they inhibit mushroom growth. And that's why on like peat bogs, for example, you shouldn't start a fire on the bare ground because you could start a fire that lasts for years on the ground. And she also mentioned that sphagnum, sphagnum moss is very absorbent, which is something that I know intimately well. <laughs> She said that the Native Americans who used to live here would use them as diapers. So yeah, you were, you were spot on this whole time. <laughs> we hiked a bit further down and took a look at more plants like wild blueberry, tamarack pine, which has been used by Native Americans to make snowshoes and other things, and Labrador tea, a rhododendron whose leaves are used for tea. Back at the main hut, Andrew spotted some other interesting plants growing nearby. I think raspberry or blackberry growing around here. I don't know if it's wild or planted. It's probably wild. It's kind of incredible how this place is engineered. I know this might be really simple, but I noticed that there's this grate right here before you come in, and that's to kick off all the snow on your shoes so it falls down below. So you're not tracking snow in. We started dinner with some hot beverages and some beer that we had bought a few days back in Acadia. Cheers. Cheers. Ding. Ding. Tastes like an antique cabinet. <laughs> One flavor for me. <laughs> I think hot water. Next, the crew walked us through the different courses for dinner, then began serving it. Up first was some hot, delicious pea soup. Mm. Good soup. I love like the thick, I don't, grainy is not the right word, but it's got like a nice texture, you know? Yeah, it's hearty. We also had thick slices of focaccia bread, which was made all the better by dipping it in the soup. Oh yeah, oh yeah, here we go. Mm. <laughs> it was delicious with butter as well. So everything, even the bread is made here at this hut. Wow, it's pretty impressive. After that was a simple but refreshing salad. followed by some creamy mashed potatoes and gravy. There were also some green beans, cooked to tender perfection, and roasted turkey with cranberry sauce. It was a Thanksgiving-style mountain dinner. Now that all the main entrees had been served, it was time to dig in. You gotta get a little bit of everything in one bite. The green beans are like perfect tenderness, like tender but not too mushy. Try the mashed potato. Mashed potatoes are nice and buttery. The potatoes are fantastic. Yeah. You were asking if we would have seconds and thirds. How are you feeling right now? I'm feeling good. Look at all the <laughs> seconds and thirds we got right here. They asked if we wanted more soup. I was like, yes. They asked if we wanted more bread. I was like, yes. <laughs> I'm going to eat till my belly's full, and then I'm going to sleep really good tonight. <laughs> After dinner, they took account of who wanted decaf and regular coffee.
And with our coffee were some beautifully crispy cookies. I actually really love like crispy cookies like this. You know, you wouldn't think it would be that good, but the cookie dipped in coffee is amazing. Mm. After dinner, we went back to our bunks before heading back out for the evening for a nature talk. The talk took place in the brisk evening air, and there were some interesting facts shared about this hut, its sustainable energy and construction, and its history. You know, earlier I pointed out that I thought there were some raspberry canes. Apparently those were planted in the late 1800s. They also mentioned that they compost all of the stuff in the sewage, uh, the toilets and stuff, and they jokingly call it making a deposit. <laughs> so with that, I'm going to go make a deposit. <laughs> I might join you. <laughs> Oh, these bunks are nice, dude. Good amount of room. Got a little net here for storing stuff, I guess. <laughs> and a table, too. <laughs> not that shelf, sorry. Let's see how the top bunk is. It's quite nice. We should think about bringing a tent this size. Just give me the tent and we'll each pack our own little bunk. We'll stack them on top of each other. We should just put bunk beds at Brian's house. There's <laughs> 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 all bunk beds in there. Good times, good times. All right, I'm going to go to the hut and meander around. Okay. Okay, I'm fine. Cool. Outside the main hut, Andrew and I watched as the moon rose in the night sky, casting all our surroundings in a beautiful, mysterious light. We sat out beneath the stars, talking about life something we used to do all the time as kids on nostalgic summer nights. It had been a full road trip journey so far. We had driven across upstate New York, all across Maine, and down New Hampshire. Tomorrow, we would have at least one last full day of the road trip. We were a bit sad to have the trip nearing its close, but tonight, we cherished the time that we had, taking in the present moment beneath the bright, Shining Moon. The next morning, we woke up at dawn. The Mountain Hut staff woke us with a morning song. Good morning, Lonesome Lake. It is 6.30. We have hot coffee ready for you, and breakfast will be served at 7. The rest of us were just waking up, but Thomas was already ready to go. Morning, guys. How'd you guys sleep? <laughs> you look like you're a camp counselor named Josh. <laughs> that is my camp counselor name. <laughs> Get your crush out of my face. <laughs> <laughs> it was a silent, brisk morning. Before breakfast, I headed down to the docks to warm up with some kung fu. Then, we started the day with hot tea and coffee, and Andrew was having trouble with the kettle. <laughs> For breakfast was a giant bowl of hot, gooey oatmeal, along with plenty of accoutrement. I'm not usually big on oatmeal, but this looks really good. I like how it's solid and gummy. <laughs> Along with the oatmeal were other options of brown sugar, raisins, and milk. As we ate, the golden glow of the morning sun began shining through the windows. Our time at this mountain hut had felt truly unique and special. After the oatmeal, we were served scrambled eggs with chives, a huge platter of pancakes, and of course, crispy strips of bacon. We made sure everyone at our table had a plate, then dug in. The eggs smell really good. They've got like chives in there or something. They do smell really good. Yeah. Bacon while hiking is pretty good. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> now we drizzled that sweet syrup on our pancakes and our bacon. This was definitely a heavy breakfast. As someone who usually doesn't eat breakfast, breakfast is a hedonistic meal. <laughs> this is oh, how you griddle. gotta do it. <laughs> After breakfast, there were some strange shenanigans happening backstage. The crew put on a short play of sorts to remind us to pack out everything we had packed in and to thank us for spending our time at Lonesome Lake. Now, there was just one thing left to do before heading out. All for one and... All for one and Thomas driving. <laughs> 
After we packed our bags, we walked back down the steps leading to the shore of the lake. We stood at the lake's shore, taking in all the sights around us in the glory of a new day's light. And then, we departed. As we hiked out, we were taken by the beauty around us. It had really been eye-opening to experience all these different places in the Northeast. From the classic New England ocean coast, to the natural landscapes of Acadia, the luxurious cottages of Bar Harbor, and the vast lakes and breathtaking heights of Katahdin. And the hospitality of the Appalachian Mountain Club in New Hampshire had only made our time in the White Mountains that much better. And on top of that, you're usually lucky enough to have one good friend you can travel with. We were grateful we had the four of us. Even though we might get testy with each other on long drives, we couldn't ask for anyone better to share in the over 1,000 miles we had traveled so far. Finally, we had reached the end of our hike. And though we had hundreds of miles left to drive, it felt like our journey was nearly over. Does this feel like the journey is just over? Kind of does. Like I, this cold weather, you're like, man, it's just time to go home, man. <laughs> you ready to go home, Brian? Oh, yeah, very ready. Feels like the whole summer's over too. Yeah, it really does. We took one last look at the nature all around us. The fall colors were creeping into the treetops that swayed in the wind. It felt like our journey was nearly over but we still had a little bit more of an adventure left as we headed to North Haven, Connecticut. Okay, get us out of here, Thomas. Yes, Captain. <laughs> and so we were off. Along the way, we stopped to stretch our legs and get some much needed exercise. Then we passed over the Samuel Morey Memorial Bridge into Vermont driving along its border. After another hour or so of driving through Vermont, we arrived in Massachusetts. We passed through Springfield, Massachusetts, where basketball was invented. Further south, we passed into Hartford, Connecticut, where we saw the distinct blue dome of Coltsville National Historic Park. And finally, we had arrived at my uncle's house in North Haven. As soon as we had parked, he gave us a tour of the backyard. Look at this awesome fireplace here. Woo, that is gonna be fun. Yo, this is super cool. The woods in the back had been neatly cleared with walls of stacked logs sitting between trees. The last road trip, we ended with my cousin's house and they were cutting big logs. Somehow these logs are part of the end of a road trip. Then we headed inside to unpack and settle in. This is our room for today. Look at this. <laughs> Who gets which section of the couch? <laughs> I feel like we can each get a section of Two couch. people on this couch. Andrew gets the small couch. one right here. Like I said, there's a guest room in the back. If you all want to sleep in the queen size bed, I'm here. <laughs> Next, we were going to head to a local pizza spot that served a New Haven specialty. How many pizzas are you guys going to eat? 50. Brian? I'm going to eat a whole pizza. <laughs> Tommy? I'm, I'm still living off that turkey and mashed potatoes from last night. I'm looking forward to that clam pizza. <laughs> Is that real? Yeah. yeah. Clam pizza, no tomato sauce, clams and bacon. I'll enjoy watching these guys enjoy well, You gotta it. try one. You gotta try one. Oh, of course. Yeah. I'll try a bite. <laughs> we headed out, and my uncle drove us to the pizza place, though it was a bit cramped in the back for the others. Imagine nine hours like this. <laughs> Today, we were headed to Ernie's Pizzeria, whose current owner, Pat, is close friends with my uncle. When we arrived, we also found out that they were celebrating their 50th anniversary. We headed inside, taking in the nostalgic late 90s atmosphere. Thank you so much. Thank you. Good. How are you doing? Good. You know what's good when it's people place, boy. 
Once we were seated, John ordered a couple of pizzas for us. Yeah, and then we'll get a white uh, clam and bacon. Lark. Yeah. Moots. Yes, of course. Clam and bacon. We also got a couple of drinks, including the Gasosa, an Italian lemon lime soda. <laughs> it tastes like, like a Sprite without the lime. <laughs> I think they need to make more of this. And we also sampled some birch beer soda. And this tastes like root beer. <laughs> <laughs> Lemony fresh. <laughs> As we enjoyed our unique refreshments, Pat offered to give us a behind the scenes look at the kitchen. And while Pat was kneading the dough, he revealed that John would sometimes exchange box folding services for food. Yeah, so I'll come in after work some days if they're if they're short staffed and fold a couple hundred pizza boxes and help out uh, restocking the mozzarella. I cut bacon. Mm. I don't like peeling garlic. It's very that it takes a long <laughs> no time. No one likes peeling oh, garlic. Yeah. <laughs> so do they pay you in pizza? Yes. Oh man, yeah. I need to volunteer at my local pizza <laughs> shop. <laughs> go show him your skills. Yeah, go show him. You got some boxes on the table. I think he actually enjoys doing this more than what he actually does. I work for a couple hours, I can actually see progress. That doesn't happen when I go to work. While we waited for our pizzas, we took in our surroundings. It was a busy day, and there were lots of orders to fulfill. But finally, it was time for us to eat. First up was an Ernie's special, John's favorite pizza, consisting of mozzarella, sausage, and mushrooms. And Robbie nearly burnt his mouth with the first bite. <laughs> <laughs> oh, great. Mm. <clears throat> I like how the crust is kind of crispy, but the gooiness of the cheese contrasts it. And up next was the coveted New Haven white clam pizza. Clams, cheese, bacon, and plenty of fresh minced garlic. Time to dig in. I didn't think clam would be one of my new favorite toppings on a pizza, <laughs> but this definitely is. I think this is something that pizza's been missing. But Robbie might be a harsher judge. Like you, you're the Simon Cowell of. Be forewarned, I do not like seafood, so we'll see how I like it. <laughs> it works on pizza. It does, doesn't it? It works, yeah. Now to Brian, the Paul Hollywood of seafood pizza. <laughs> oh no. The clam's not as strong as I expected it to be, and the bacon actually works really nicely with it. Mm. I like it a lot, actually. I wanted a piece with lots of clams on it. Mmm. Yeah, it's like that. Saltinas of the ocean. It works. It blends into the pizza. I think the bacon and the clam works together because they both have that, like, salty pungence. That's really good. Uncle Sennard. After thanking our new uncle, Dr. Sennard, Pat graciously explained to us what makes his pizza special. The water's a big difference on the north in the northeast. The flavor's different, the texture of the pizza's different. Secret family, family yeah, recipe. I mean, <laughs> <laughs> and, and your Pat, and your, yeah. your, your father was Ernie. 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 Yeah. You started working here when you were 10. Yeah, so. So, oh my yeah. father just passed away, but you know, we had over 120 years of experience between the two of us. Oh my so. gosh, <laughs> this is so good. Thank you so much, Pat. <laughs> Thank you. After finishing our delicious meal, we said our final goodbyes to Pat and the rest of the crew. He's coming in again. Nice meeting you all. Hey, it's nice to meet you. Thank yeah. you so much for everything. That was great. I'm so full. I'm going to go home, and I'm going to lay on the sofa, and nobody's going to disturb me. <laughs> <laughs> and before we left, my uncle brought out a huge box of wine that Pat supposedly owed him. <laughs> Good stuff. Before heading home, John showed us one of his favorite places to hike, Sleeping Giant State Park. So all of this area here and this whole little loop road that we're going to go on here, this was all completely tree covered. And there was like a microburst here and it sheared off all the trees. Now we headed back and got ready for a restful evening. All right, shall we wine and not dine? Thomas also showed us around the house, which had a nostalgic late 80s feel to it. That is some retro tech. That's awesome. We're admiring your retro technology right now. After the tour, we headed back to the patio for an evening of wine by the fire. the fire started, smoke billowed out the beautiful stone chimney, a custom art piece constructed in such a way that there was no visible mortar.
As we fed logs onto the fire, John introduced us to the first wine of the night. One of my favorites, it's a Shiraz-based wine. Um, it's sort of the higher end for the 19 Crime series. With the wine poured, we took our seats by the fire and enjoyed the rest of the evening together. Thanks for coming to visit. Thanks for having us on the John. Cheers, everybody. Thanks, Thanks so much. Yeah. Yen Bay. <laughs> yeah, that's right. The fire burned on into the night as the sun set and the stars came out. Now, it was time to enjoy some mooncakes, as tonight was a special night in Chinese culture. So, Mid-Autumn Festival, or Zhongqiujie in Chinese, is basically the mo second most important holiday um, right after Chinese New Year's. It's basically a celebration of bountiful harvest. It's when the full moon is at its fullest. And one of the biggest traditions, I guess you could say, around it is the gathering of family. It's almost kind of like as important as like the gathering of family at Thanksgiving. That's also another thing that the full moon represents, family coming together and gathering together. Um, and mooncakes are just a traditional snack that uh, is eaten during that time. So we are going to partake in some mooncakes. The mooncakes we were having tonight had a sweet lotus paste and salted egg yolk. Cheers. As someone who did not grow up with this tradition, I love how non-sweet this is. How do you like it? <laughs> Good. The yolk is sort of a, it's an intact yolk. And yeah. It shelled out and I had it all in one bite. <laughs> <laughs> so is this a yearly tradition for you guys growing up? So These would just show up randomly in my, in my household. <laughs> well, I feel like it was never like a huge celebration, but we would definitely have mooncakes and like dinner and stuff like that. Where, where can you even buy these? Um, these are from, from Costco. Costco. <laughs> <laughs> I knew it. Ah, yeah. <laughs> I think that light is the moon. So we have officially oh, you know, yeah. included it in the celebration. <laughs> there we go. That'll be great. I'll leave an extra cake here for you. Oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah. okay great. Unless off camera you tell us you hated it. No, no. <laughs> no it, was, it was actually quite good. <laughs> this will be a, a, a wine from Tuscany. I believe it's a Sangiovese is the grape, which is pretty standard for Italian wine. We enjoyed the rest of the wine my uncle had brought out and cherished the warmth of the hearth that kept us comfortable on this cool, early fall evening. The wine glasses were now empty, and the night had become much calmer. As the fire burned on, John eventually headed inside. We were all tired and ready to head in as well, but wanted to spend a little more time on our last night of the road trip, sitting outside together around the fire. And so, we sat around, talking about our journey through the Northeast amid the fire's warmth and beneath the light of the full moon. I think this has actually been a phenomenal end to this trip because your uncle is another person who's partly responsible for the birth of Adventure Archives. So when I was in eighth grade, my uncle took me on a trip to Yellowstone. That really lit in me this fire to go outside and enjoy nature. Really ever since then, I've had this drive in me to go and hike and explore these mountains. So I appreciate you guys letting me bring him on the show. He's the reason why I am really as passionate about nature as I am. Well, it was such a burden to enjoy wine by his fireplace. <laughs> <laughs> he actually said the same thing that we said when we first went into the wild, which is, I didn't know there were places like this, mm -hmm. that they're actually real. Now your uncle, his first experience was at Yellowstone, and me and Andrew's first real outdoors experience was at Yellowstone also, and I still remember getting off the plane at Jackson Hole, and then we were driving, just being completely awestruck and dumbfounded by what I was looking at. Yeah, yeah. And what's kind of astounding is, New England isn't that far from Ohio, and it's taken us eight years to get to New Hampshire and Maine, so some of the closer mountains to us. I don't know about you guys, but I'm always kind of surprised by how impressive the nature is yeah, of New England. It was beyond whatever I could have expected. It's very different from some of the places that we're familiar with. This is really its own thing, like yeah. nothing else in the US. Favorite moment and least favorite moment. Oddly enough, I think one of my favorite moments 
was still that cottage that we stayed in <laughs> because we just had such a fun time that night. Yeah. That was good. Yeah. <laughs> that was really good. I think for me, my favorite moment was getting to that AMC hut and I don't know, just being in that little communal area and just mm-hmm. being like, oh yeah, this is this is what I wanted. You know, that was really good. Yeah. Uh, I'm gonna have to go with the views from the top of Katahdin. I know you guys didn't get to experience it, but man, being above the clouds. Well, I mean, you got to experience being above the clouds. Imagine that on a different mountain. Can't wait to watch it from my <laughs> the comfort of my bed. <laughs> Cheers to that. <laughs> I think my favorite moment. I'm gonna go with the dark horse one here. It's got to be eating buffalo wings on top of Niagara Falls. Mm. That was that was great. That yeah. was a great. Start. For me, I was I was so demoralized after driving five hours after working a full day. You know, picking up those wings, I was like, is it worth it? Is this worth it? I've heard Niagara Falls isn't worth it, and then I get to the top, I'm like, whoa. That really stood out to me mm. for some reason. Okay, so least favorite. Mm. Oh, that's easy for me. Waking up at 4.30 a.m. to <laughs> that Katahdin. Dude, you guys don't even know. I felt so dead. I felt like I had no energy, no motivation. So I can relate to your experience because my least favorite moment was the hike up to the hut after having hiked Katahdin. Uh, yeah. Every step was just like, why? What did I do to deserve this? <laughs> <laughs> my least favorite moment was when we were driving from Mount Washington to the AMC hut. It was raining and I really wasn't sure if the AMC hut was going to be worth it. I felt mm-hmm. like this was a risk that might not have been worth the payoff in the end. Mm-hmm. Well, we paid off, baby. I'm glad it's you guys off, liked yeah. it. So Brown that butter cookies. Cheers to that. <laughs> Thank you. That split pea soup from Turkey. Cheers to that. Cheers, Cheers to that. To that. <laughs> that made me realize my least favorite moment, which was Mount Washington, not because of anything about Mount Washington, but because I was up there at the summit and I had not earned it at all. Uh, <laughs> you guys had just climbed Katahdin and there was a part of me that was like, I need to have hiked a rigorous hike before getting to the top of the mountain. Yeah. But that makes me excited because I really want to do the presidential traverse at some point. And now that you guys know what the presidential traverse is, you may or may not be interested in doing it now. <laughs> well, hopefully this road trip is the start of many more trips in the Northeast. Cheers, yes, to cheers to that. Cheers to cheers that. Cheers to Thank you so much for watching. If you enjoy our videos, please consider joining our Patreon community at patreon.com slash adventure. You can get access to weekly live streams, in-depth updates, bloopers, commentaries, and more. We also have t-shirts available, which you can find by clicking the link in the description below. As always, thank you so much for watching.
trying to get us on the road so we can get back to Ohio while there's still some daylight. I woke up at 6 a.m. and looked at my phone and I was like, that was already 6. <laughs> <laughs> All right, strategy, water, iPad, switch, PlayStation Vita, chargers. So what's the donut place? It's called Neil's Donuts. I don't know how to describe it. It's just the donuts are, are awesome. They're pretty good. They left a lasting impression last time I was here. Are they actually edible? It's not like a Buckeye, but mm -hmm. I'll kill you. It's pretty good actually. <laughs> oh, okay. How is it? You get enough nut meat in there? It actually isn't that bad. I'm kind of like a tasteless walnut. You guys are missing out. Tom is like, I have checked out. I, it's time to go into the virtual world. I'm talking to other people, not you guys. Uh, the donut place may be closed. Are they closed? They're closed, yeah. Oh, bummer. Right. We'll just head on our way, but I, I, I feel bad because I want to say goodbye to you, but I didn't, uh, I don't think we'll be able to make it work. Yeah. But, no big deal. No all big right. Deal. But thanks, thanks a lot for coming by. It was a lot of fun. Yeah, thanks for having us, Uncle John. Appreciate Thank, you. It. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, sounds good. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. 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 Two sourdough breakfast sandwiches. Oh, actually, I want a wake up rack sandwich. And can I get a wake up rack? <laughs> Rack sandwich? Uh, I'll do the veggie egg. Veggie egg, please. All right. And can I get two sides of hash browns? Uh, just give me um, <laughs> a vanilla frosted. And can I... <laughs> and a vanilla what? Vanilla frosted donut. Can I get a vanilla frosted donut? And a pumpkin All munchies. Right. And a what? Pumpkin munchies. And pumpkin munchies. I think that's it. Thanks for being patient. No problem. $32.95. $32.95. I was gonna be like, that's gotta be like a hundred dollars worth of donuts. <laughs> you know, that Anything else? Dunkin yes. Donuts. Anything else? Yes. Oh, fishing. <laughs> the line is gone. <laughs> oh, it's pumpkin. No, not bad. Not bad. I could do. It. I'll, I'll do a pumpkin or two. It's almost October. You don't like pumpkin? Like Look at the, this line. We've caused. We created a huge line. <laughs> <laughs> We're acting like Dunkin' Donuts is that special. There's like 20 Dunkin' Donuts next to my house. Yeah. <laughs> I don't... Maybe they're better up here, I don't where, know. Where, where do you guys know the Dunkin' Donuts besides like at the mall? There's this one on the way to Brian's house, isn't there? It's, it's, it's definitely an East Coast thing though. It's definitely an East Coast thing. Dunkin' Donuts. America run no dun dun. <laughs> <laughs> How's that Bavarian and or Boston cream? That is Boston cream. Actually, it is very good. This is fresh. Oh, wait, maybe I'll try one. Oh, well, did you order one? Yeah. Because yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I thought I, I thought I ordered. I'm going to be regretting this later. Delicious. Revise it, revise it. No, it's I'm not going to be five minutes. I'm going to make it five minutes. <laughs> you make it five minutes and we'll see what happens. <laughs> make it five minutes. Robbie's There's going to be in your car. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, see you guys later. See you, Robbie. Good trip. See you, Thomas. <laughs> Peace out. Right. Robbie, give me your keys. Give me your keys to my car. Thank you. Alright, chauffeur, unpack our bags. <laughs> Okay, band meeting. Um, first on the agenda, we've got a, a, a announcement that says, Happy birthday, Mukand. Keep on rolling, keep on smiling, and may the force be with you always. I'm not quite sure what that's supposed to mean, but... Um, Star Wars, right? Yeah, yeah, I think it's Star, Star Wars. Wars. Star Wars. There's no wars in the star. We didn't have Star Wars back in New Zealand. Let's do a roll call. Anne McBride. 
it's it's pronounced Andrew. Lynn and Rocco. Lynn is my last name. It, and it's Ruby. It's not it's not Rocco. Brian and Katia Strom. Oh well, I'm Brian, but who's Katia Strom? Item two, a shout out. Oh no, that's uh, item two a shout out. Um, we've got to come up with ideas for shout outs. Star Wars. We could do a Star Wars shout. Star Wars is good. Now, come on, we need to be a bit more original. What if we could come up with a skit where we just list the names? I, I kind of like that very, idea. Very monotonous. That's, 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 a, that's not a bad idea. Well, no, no, we can't do that. This, these well, are for well, our fans. Well, well, what other names we have on the list? Well, we've got Traynor C and Christina Alvarez and Mary Sinkavage. I mean, we've got a lot of names here. Yeah, I, I think we could just... You know, you say William Garnett. Don't, don't look at my list. James Rokitsky and, you know. Leon and Lou Lin. I, I don't know who they are, but... I, I'm sure they would love a shout out like that. I mean, we've got at least like 30 names here. We've got Elaine R. Anthony. And then she wants a personalized shout out. She wants to shout out to her son, Travis Clinton Garrett. I mean, we can't just, we can't just list that off they've got to be a little bit more personal i prefer a list to a skit well just there's, there's more isn't there yeah i mean we've got uh another, yeah, that, oh, what, what another, about that one right there that's brian and aussie yamagata aussie aussie i i don't like uh, that at all i don't want to shout out any yeah, aussies uh, we got yeah. australians and all this backwards clearly from new zealand those people are backwards you can <laughs> tell by our voices yes yeah yes yes yes, yes. 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 <laughs> <laughs> special shout out to anthony Marisa and BW Shown. Say it! Say it! Richard Frangemore, I'd like to give a shout out to all the staff and friends of Cohen's Gap State Park in Fort Loudoun, Pennsylvania. Thanks for taking great care of my favorite campground in PA and all the awesome hiking trails there. You gonna be okay sleeping by yourself tonight, Dan Vulcans? After that scary movie? Yeah, I'll be all right. Okay, yeah, you, you just sleep tight. You just sleep tight. No. Don't let the bed bugs bite. You'll be fine. Thanks, Dad. You're welcome, son. You wanna check out my new ski mask and kukri that John Scott's hit me? Ah! No? Okay. Good night, son. What am I thinking? <laughs> Jason Bourgeois also sent us these brownies. You wanna try out these brownies? Ah! Oh, what am I thinking? Good night, son. You sleep tight. Hello. Hello, hello. How's it going? We need to give a shout out to Sue and Tom Kozlowski. Sue and Tom, thank you so much for everything you're doing. Without your help, we can't do what we're what we love to do. So thank you so much for your continued support and looking forward to seeing you guys again. Good job for a cold call. <laughs> <laughs> shout out to Douglas Jackson. We also have a shout out from TS, who would love to do a shout out to Nikki. She is his best friend, wife, and the most amazing mom to their son Liam that he could ask for. She is his own Energizer Bunny, and she can cram 48 hours of things in a 24-hour day. That is impressive. Also, we just missed it, but happy birthday to Mukund Kati. That's from your brother, Sayali. Thank you both. Gavin Ryan? Yeah? I'm looking for Sue and Ton. Who's asking? My name is Aaron Jones. I'm here on behalf of the AA Discord to deliver a message. Shout out, eh? Give me a minute. I wouldn't try that if I were you, Jasper Caparota. You shouldn't make a habit of sneaking up on bounty hunters from Expedition Research, LLC. Jesus and Jamie paid good money for me to find you. I can pay you better. These aren't Imperial credits either. Where are you from? The Castillo system? No, the Paguaga system. What's your name, son? 
It's J. Ramundo. But you can just call me J. Mundo. How do you like the ship? I've never flown in a cruiser from the Aquia Giosari system before. Uh, the engines were from GreatLakeWatercraft.com. So, you like love cats? The cat's name is Salvador Gonzalez. I'm more partial to droids. This one's named Sanwa One. Oh, okay. This is the Imperial Cruiser Madeline Holly. By order of Emperor Sanjay and Huang, transmit your clearance codes. What shall we do? Oh, I've got a clearance code for John Truitt and Charlie Joe, my old friends. All right, I'll input it into the system. Wait, is it Charlie Joe or John Truitt? How can you have a clearance code from two people? You want to sit out here a little longer and enjoy the fire? Yeah, we gotta at least wait till the moon comes out. Give me the line. Give me the Les Stroud line. <laughs> <laughs> if you listen carefully, you can hear the geese flying. <laughs> uh, I was actually gonna do one of those two. I was gonna be like, and there's the full moon over there. <laughs> <laughs> when I end the scene, <clears throat> that's the end of the scene. <laughs> no, that's oh, good. Man, that's that was great. That'll be the secret ending. <laughs>